you guys absolutely rock. You're coming out here and supporting this amazing experience, and we get to pinch ourselves. So I, I get to pinch less of me this month, because you know what I'm saying. Tonight is a very special night. The secret is out. Genies do exist. Woo! Come in all shapes, sizes, colors, and I'm a particular blue jean. Our reason for existence is to serve others. And I do this by traveling around the world, surprising people that have cancer and other heroes with their wishes. And as a genie, I do not face a person. Uh, it was ha uh, Halloween 2010, so it really is only three years ago. Um, I was 23 with three children under the age of five, and I was making a decision. I turned to my partner that day and told him that I wouldn't be coming home that night. I don't really remember much of a response. I just continued to get the kids ready for trick-or-treating, and off we went. And we literally just kept going, and we didn't turn back. Four and a half hours later, we arrived at my uncle's house, and I just put the kids to bed, never really said anything to anybody. And the next morning, I got up and started telling my family about the decision I had made and that I needed their support. I didn't really have a plan in place, and I just needed help. So I came up, I stood like a statue here in front of the microphone, and I started to tell my story. I only got about maybe two, two and a half notes through, and all of a sudden, the paper just left my hand, just went over there. I was like, Okay. In my head, I was screaming. I was like, what's going on, what's going on, what's going on? But then I started to tell my story, and as I was telling my story, I started to relax. I was like, okay, the lights are on. I can't see anyone. People I know can see me, but I can't see them, so it's great. Um, so I started to tell my story. I started to relax. And by the end of it, I was like, no, I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. I have, at that point, 50 or 60 eyes on me. I was like, okay, sweet. This is kind of cool being a savior of attention. Uh, anyways, I, I woke up in the hospital bed, and... Uh, and I looked over at my, my sister, I was unrecognizable at this point, I, I was so, I had bandages all over my face. I looked at my sister, uh, she looked at me, and uh, she didn't recognize me. And to be honest, I didn't recognize myself at that time either. And um, all I was thinking was, this wasn't worth it. This is not what I joined the military to do. I, I didn't, I didn't want to die, <laughs> you know, that's, that, that's not what I was doing here. I, I thought I was, I, I wanted to change the world, I wanted to make a difference, I wanted to, inspire people and I wanted to do it. I wanted to take an action toward what was happening in the world. I thought there's a lot of bad things happening from a geopolitical point of view, from, a, from that standpoint. And I said, you know, this is my stance. I'm going to join the army. And it, and it, it never worked out. And every night I would lay down and pray. And I would say, dear God, I pray for the sick, the dying, the poor, the hungry, the sad, the lonely, the child abused, the drug addicts, the alcoholics, the mentally ill, and the mentally retarded in my 11-year-old prayer language, and I still pray that same prayer. And I say, how can I be of service in the world? How can I give back? So at 12, I started working at the seniors home with the sick and the dying. I've had the privilege of taking relief teams to developing countries and help build over 50 houses for the poor and the hungry. I guess the point is, one of the most inevitable factors of life is death. And it may sound grim, and it may sound dreary, but it's something that we can't avoid. We're all going to have to face grieving a loved one at some point. But it's the way that we choose to grieve that makes all the difference in the world. I always like to listen, there's, I'm sure you guys have heard the Tim McGraw song, Live Like You Were Dying. And I think it's a beautiful song, because the words are so true. But I think there's a little something more to add to that. We should also live because somebody else has been dying. And it's living for somebody. I know we all have our different beliefs and our different faiths and different religions, but I personally believe that I'm sure anyone that we've lost wouldn't want us to sit around and, and mope and not live life to the fullest just because they're gone. Chill, meet the speakers. We love you all. We really mean that. Hope you had a great time. We'll see you next month. This is an extra large. In May, it was a triple XL. All right.